Hey everybody, this is Praxis, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how to turn this into this. Right, so you know there's those videos where they promise you the world at the beginning and then you watch it and like, oh, okay, that's kind of what they meant. Yeah, this is sort of one of those, but you are gonna be able to save some money and saving money is kind of like earning money by doing something like this right here. I'm gonna teach you a really cool skill that I learned a couple months ago. I've been doing it, it's been really successful. Uh, and if you bake bread, I would highly recommend you try this out. I saw a video made by Ethical Preparedness a while back. Here's a link to it if you wanna check it out. It's a great video about cultivating wild yeast. If there was ever an SHTF situation, you wanna make bread. We got a big problem. The Russia Chinese just crashed our economy by dumping bird flu infected nuclear waste on us okay. and creating earthquakes. Here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna bake some bread. When you can't go out to the store and get a yeast packet, you know, how are you gonna make bread? So he talks about, you know, in that video about how to, you know, just get yeast from the environment and you can start, you know, doing your own bread that way. Uh, lots of other people talk about the idea that you can go to a bakery and they'll give you like their, like a bit of their starter maybe and they'll share it with you and then you can start growing it and developing it and multiplying it and all that kind of stuff. And it, it all kind of always sounded a little bit complicated to me. I wanted to try something even a little simpler and that's what I'm gonna share with you guys today. Uh, so I do bread baking on a weekly basis. Every Friday we do pizza night. So I'm um, got this ongoing kind of cycle of where I'm always you know, making bread. So I wanted to try my own starter, but instead of doing wild yeast from you know wherever, I just grabbed some yeast that I would normally use, and I, I started my own starter. And I'm gonna show you how to do it yourself. But first, what I'm gonna do is show you how to use it so you can know if this is something that's, uh, you know, appealing to you. I'm gonna get Benjamin out of the way here. Like I said, I do pizza every Friday night, and I usually do two of them. One of them for the people that like, like all the cool like grains and everything thrown into the bread, and then one for people that like maybe want a little bit more plain and white. So I do two of them. And all I do is I take this jar that I've got here. And again, I'm going to show you how to make one of these jars in a moment, but I want to show you first how to use it. And I just take a spoon and just kind of scoop around the top here. And I'm going to take out a glop of it. Did I measure it? Nope. And throw it in there and then throw another glop in there. And there's a little bit of wetness on the bottom here. I'll throw some of that wetness in there. And I'll get some of that, that wetness and put it in here. And well, there's a little bit extra in here. I'll just keep going. Yeah, throw, I usually make more of the, of the uh, ugh, more of the big stuff. It's usually not this messy. I'm like sitting down. Usually I'm like standing over them. So it's a little awkward. Okay, so anyway, I got a little bit left in the bottom here. And that's all you really need. So uh, at this point, this is just like putting the yeast in. And now I do, would just add the, you know, the flour and the water and sturm and do everything you normally would with bread. That's, that's the extent of how difficult this new technique is, is. Instead of taking this and pouring it in, you just do that scoop kind of thing. Not a big deal. I'm going to get those out of the way and tell you how to you know, create one of these and maintain one of these. And creating it and maintaining it are pretty much the same thing. So uh, the process of creating or maintaining is that you want to start with some flour. And I'm going to take three scoops of flour. And I'm not going to say how many like, you know, what size a scoop is or whatever, because it doesn't matter. Uh, it's just, you're doing it in ratios. So three parts flour to two parts water. So here's one part flour. Okay. And a second part flour. Uh, it's a little bit of a small target. How about you do the water? The water is a little bit less of a uh, chance of it falling all over my lap. All right. And here's a third part flour. And this is just you know, whole wheat flour I just bought at the store. You can grind your own or whatever, but I, I didn't end up doing that. All right. Uh, if you stand there, it's gonna be very difficult for people to see. How about you stand here? You wanna hold the cup? Hold the cup, okay. And I'm gonna do two parts of water. One, and you can pour that. 
I, yeah, I know. I've been watching it. We have ants in the house. One. Okay. And... Two. And I said two parts, but I usually do like two and then just a little more. Because I found it was a little bit dry. I'm going to give you just a little bit more. That's it. Just a tiny bit more. Just a, just a taste. So that's it. Then we take... Thank you very much for the help. Okay, let me just hit the top first. Okay, he's going to stir, stir in there. And then you just want to stir the whole thing together. Uh, just get it all, you know, like you would with regular dough. It's going to be a little bit wet in there, and that's what you want. And what I do with this is that I just put it in the refrigerator. Um, as soon as I'm done stirring it up, it goes into the refrigerator, and it just sits there for the week while I'm not using it. The, uh, the bacteria, which is the, the, the yeast, slowly starts multiplying and dividing and turning into more of them. And then at the end of the week, I take it out the day, I take it out the day before I want to use it and let it warm up a little bit just, uh, you know, for that one day. And then it's ready to be used like that. So that's really as simple as it is. Three parts flour, two parts water, plus a little bit more. If you're just starting out, throw some yeast in. If you're maintaining it, you don't have to bother with the yeast because the yeast is already in there. Throw it in the fridge for a week. And by the time a week is over, it'll all be ready. Take some out, use it, repeat, throw it back in the fridge, and it's ready for next week. That's it. I would super highly recommend it. I've saved so much. What are you doing? Oh, are you killing the ant? Okay. Uh, I would super highly recommend it. I've saved, I, well, I don't know, how much, is yeast really that expensive? But it's just nice to like, instead of having to go to the grocery store to pick up yeast or make sure I have fresh yeast, I just have to walk over to my refrigerator and I get yeast that way. And then I'm done. I can't say that no animals were killed in the making of this video. But that was incidental anyway, I suppose. That's it. Thanks for watching. This episode has been brought to you in part by Prescott Caliber Club and Jeske Defense Strategies. Prescott Caliber Club is a federally licensed firearm manufacturer and retail store specializing in firearms, survival gear, and producing great online content. If you want to thank them for supporting this channel, go check them out at prescottcalclub.com. Please subscribe and tune in every Friday at 4.30 New York time for a new video. And if you'd like to support this channel, you can do so both through Patreon or PayPal.